The moment of death is rarely seen, and even rarer is it photographed, close up in such dramatic fashion. This photo, known as the death of a loyalist militiaman, or simply the falling soldier, was taken in 1936 during the Spanish Civil War by legendary war photographer Robert Kappa. There's no arguing that it's a striking image, but is everything as it seems? Robert Kappa was born Andrei Friedman in 1931. A Hungarian Jew, he later moved to Berlin in the 1930s and trained as a photographer. With war in Europe brewing, he fled Germany, but I don't think even he could imagine in his wildest dreams that he would go on to be the most celebrated war photographer and photojournalist of his time. By 1936, only 22 years old, having changed his name to Kappa, he found himself in Spain, covering the events of the Spanish Civil War. He was accompanied by another photographer, Gerda Taro. So, what makes this so special? These days, we're used to seeing images of conflict from all over the world. We often see them live as events unfold and from different viewpoints. But the Spanish Civil War was in a different era. Prior to the 1930s, news had been slow to reach home. Photographs were of poor quality and the equipment required to take photos was large and cumbersome, so photographers couldn't operate close to the fighting. Kappa and Taro were pioneers, establishing a new kind of photojournalism, using lightweight cameras to get close to the action. And photo magazines, such as View and Life, were creating a market for newsworthy images. Of all the pictures that Kappa took whilst covering the Spanish Civil War, the image of the falling soldier, which is also known as the death of a loyalist militiaman, has become one of the most famous war photos of its time, and it's definitely been the most scrutinised. The image is reported to have been taken on the 5th of September 1936 at Cerro Muriano, near the Cordoba Front. It was first published in View magazine and later in Life magazine, with the caption, A Spanish soldier, the instant he is dropped by a bullet through the head. Kappa himself spoke about the image in a radio interview in October 1947. So the fourth time I just kind of put my camera above my head and even didn't look and clicked a picture when they moved over the trench. The publication of that picture launched the career of Kappa and it became a symbol of the struggle against fascism. But there's suspicion around the validity of the now famous image, with many people suggesting it was staged. Since the 1970s, there have been significant doubts about its authenticity due to its location, the identity of its subject, and the discovery of staged photos that were taken at the same time and place. In 1975, Philip Knightley claimed that the photo had been staged in his book, The First Casualty. Then, Jose Manuel Susperegui also published evidence that brought the location of the photo into doubt. He claimed that by comparing the image with the others taken at the same time by Kappa and his partner, Gerda Taro, that the image, whether it was genuine or staged when it was taken, was not taken at Cerro Muriano, where Kappa claimed, but was taken near the town of Espejo, approximately 35 miles away from the fighting at the front. That by itself is not enough to rule out the validity of the image. At this time, photographers and journalists were kept well back from the front lines. They moved around a lot in the rear areas, often asking soldiers to pose for images or to conduct some drills so they could capture some action. In the other images, a group of loyalist militia are seen posing for the camera and conducting drills around a system of trenches. I previously mentioned that this was common practice at the time. The way the surrounding pictures have been taken suggests they're not taken in the heat of battle. I've been in the heat of battle a few times, including at the wrong end of incoming machine gun fire, and it's definitely not advised to pose for a group photo. A common theory about the photo is that as the militiamen were drilling for the benefit of the photographers that a sniper picked off the militiamen, although Kappa, he describes it a bit differently. So my milicianos been shooting in the direction of that machine gun for five minutes and then stood up and said, Vamonos, and get out from the trench, and began to go after that machine gun. Sure enough, the machine gun opened up and moved them down. 
Alo Susperegi, one of the first to establish the photos to have been taken well away from the Cordoba front, claims that there were no reports of snipers or machine gun fire in the area of Vespeo. Then there's the matter of the identity of the falling soldier, who is claimed to be Frederico Borel Garcia. There are reports of that person being killed in the war, near Cerro Muriano, but the reports of his death describe the area as being wooded and that he was shot and killed whilst taking cover behind a tree. We don't see any trees in Kappa's picture. There are also two further images in the series, one of which was published in View magazine in 1936. These show a second soldier falling to the ground in just as dramatic fashion as the first. But what are the chances that the first body was dragged away and a second man shot on the same location whilst Kappa was clicking the camera high above his head as he described? All allegations that the photos were staged have been refuted by the International Centre Photography and there's no conclusive proof either way. Whether the falling soldier accidentally fell, fell on purpose for the camera or was shot and killed, you will have to decide for yourself. But regardless of your thoughts, this photo brought the grim reality of war right into people's homes to be seen whilst they ate their breakfast. And to this day, it makes people question what is the truth and more? Robert Kappa went on to photograph the most dangerous conflicts of the era. He photographed the war between China and Japan in 1937, and he was aboard the first landing craft on D-Day at Omaha Beach, which you can hear more about in a future Negatives episode.